Pakistan, a country of abundant resources and amazing natural beauty. With vast, untapped potential for hydropower. But what's the price for progress for those caught in its path? Amid larger national interests, they need help to find their rights. Guidance from organizations which understand the need for progress, but which understand better the most awesome power of all. People. The Tarbela Dam and Hydro Power Complex in northern Pakistan. Built in the 1960s, it feeds from the River Indus and generates a huge share of the country's energy needs. But its footprint isn't light. Mega projects need mega space. They uproot communities destroy a fragile social fabric and force already poor people from their only source of income, the land. Take it away and many local people without education or alternative skills have nothing to fall back on. <laughs> Pakistan has enormous potential for hydropower, a valuable resource in uncertain economic times which it must continue to tap to meet the energy needs of an expanding population. One of the things that we missed at the time of building these earlier projects was that we looked at it primarily from the point of view of engineering perfection. But later, later on we realized from those experiences and from global experience that it was not only engineering intervention that we were trying to implement. There was a whole social engineering that was taking, that required a solution. But before social intervention comes a far more pressing issue, fair compensation for land. At Tarbela and Mangla dams, from where thousands of people were relocated, many financial settlements weren't made. And to this day, many people struggle without having received a penny. When the next mega project was announced in the 1990s, the Ghazi Barota hydropower project, many people took to the streets in protest fearing their rights too would be ignored. But the Water and Power Development Authority had learned from its earlier mistakes. It created a new body to find solutions. Ghazi Barota Tarakiati Idara, or the Ghazi Barota Development Organization. Tasawa Rashid, GBTI's charismatic general manager, is a man who lives his ideals. He's been at the organization from the start, in the heart of communities he loves and understands. He wins their trust by speaking their language. کمیونٹی تک پیغام پہنچانے کے لیے ہم جو ہے ان کے ساتھ ان کی زبان میں بات کرتے ہیں ان کے ماحول میں جا کے ان کے الفاظ میں ان کو سمجھانے کی کوشش کرتے ہیں تبھی ان تک ہماری بات پہنچتی ہے اور ایک سوشل آرگنائزر جب کوئی اپنا پیغام لے کے جاتا ہے تو وہ تو ایسے انداز اپناتا ہے کہ اپنی گفتگو میں وہ مقامی مسالوں کو شعر و شاعری کو اور لوگ وہاں کی کہاوتوں کو استعمال کرتا ہے GBTI was created to implement the Resettlement Action Plan demanded by the consortium of banks and lenders led by the World Bank backing the Ghazi Barota hydropower project. 
GBTI brought with it a wealth of experience, but even its leaders were surprised when they started understanding the community's demands. I found that the factories were not at all interested in what we were offering them. They were only interested in one thing, in land compensation. The land acquisition and land compensation is the first priority if you want, firstly, that the effectives should not be harassed and put to unnecessary hardship, and secondly, if you want the project to be implemented smoothly. At a land valuation office near Attuk, acquisition agents pore over an outstanding claim for compensation. It's more than 10 years since Abdul Rashid's land was taken, but he still hasn't received full payment. In the presence of GBTI officials, the budget officer confirms the paperwork is in order and issues a cheque for 71,000 rupees, the end of a long, anxious wait, and an example of GBTI's talent for finding compromise. It negotiated levels of compensation acceptable to the affectees and WAPTA, set at prevailing market rates. But GBTI's unique intervention doesn't stop there. During construction, GBHP generated around 8,000 jobs. Most of them were for local people. After completion, they found themselves out of work, but equipped with invaluable skills. GBTI has taken the process one step further setting up skills building schemes for hundreds of people. Dialogue with the community is an article of faith for GBTI, which mobilized people to speak up for their own needs. In Ghazi region, an election unique in the field of social development in Pakistan takes place for a villager to serve on GBTI's board of directors. <laughs> तो जो लोकल नुमाइंदगान आते हैं तो वही मसाइल आगे ले आते हैं और बेहतर तरीके से इसको हल कर सकते हैं The next logical step for GBTI was to channel people's untapped resources in directions that meet their needs and fit the community's cultural conditions This small embroidery enterprise started by microfinance is a good example There's a lot of potential there and uh, it requires them to be organized for economies of scale, for strength of voice, because individuals and individual poor people, especially in a system uh, like this, can't get very far. Uh, and this is the idea of the social organization or the, or the mobilization. And then, of course, each of those households that forms that community organization plans its own uh, activities. And they're very simple things. They may require credit, they may require trading in livestock. It's things that relate to their very basic lives. This principle was never more true of the way GB...